For this video I'll be working through the Level 2 2018 Mechanics Exam. Question 1. A water balloon launcher is made from stretchy rubber that approximates the spring as shown in the, uh, the photographs below. It looks like a... yeah, simple enough. Um, to determine the spring constant, Oliver, Year 12 student, uh, measures the distance that one side of the rubber is extended when various masses were attached to it. Um, Oliver's results are displayed in the table and graph below. Right, here's a table. Um, as you can see, it's a straight line. And we've got meters down the bottom, so we have to worry about getting thrown off the centimeters and force up the side. And they've even put a table, which is kind of nice. You don't have to read off the graph. Using the data and graph above, show the spring constant K for one side of the t stretchy rubber is 98 newtons per meter. If you go on your formula sheet, we have F equals negative KX. This is the K they're talking about. That's the spring constant. So all we do is write F equals negative K X and in other words we rearrange so divide X on both sides in other words K is equal to negative F over X uh, which is going to give us equal to negative and I'll just pick because it's a straight line and it goes to the origin I'll just pick the top one 29.4 and 0 .30. so the force is 29.4 and the extension is going to be negative 0 0.3 because you're pulling it backwards and it's going to give me positive 98 newton meters there you go, no, newtons per meter um, cool next page on the draw a closed labeled scale vector diagram on the grid below um, the 80 newton horizontal force has been drawn for you um, here's the setup here, you've got, I'm not going to read the top stuff, two bungee cords, you're pulling them back at 45 degrees, and here's pulling with a force of 80 newtons. It's not moving right here, so the net force here is going to be zero, so these here need to add to that. So in other words, if I started here, which is my origin, this is where I'm starting, I've gone along horizontally 80 newtons. I need to get back to here, and I can see how I can get back to the air. I've got one vector at 45 degrees upwards and one vector at 45 degrees downwards. So I'm gonna end up something like this, up and then down, and I need to figure out exactly what that's gonna be. So this is eight squares across, four squares across is gonna be one, two, three, four, which is here, and 45 degrees means it's a equilateral triangle, so four across, four up, one, two, three, four. This is where my first vector is gonna go from from here to here. If you had a protractor you could measure 45 degrees um, but that's the sort of the way to think about it. You need a ruler for this otherwise it's going to look like rubbish and now we need to figure out which vector that is. That is F1 because it's going up. Pretty neat, um, pretty messy I should say. And now we need to get back to zero. This also has to be F2 and I'll put some arrows on that to show that is F2 and we can see F2 down there. That's, the, this is not to scale which is kind of misleading. This should be a right angle triangle because this here is a right angle triangle. So this isn't exactly to scale which is kind of annoying but it's meant to throw you off. Um, using the grid above or any other method, ca method calculate the magnitude of F1. So one of these sides and the way we're going to do that is one, two, three, four squares up, one, two, three, four squares across. Here's our right angle triangle. We're just going to use Pythagoras. You could get a ruler and measure it out, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, in other words, the hypotenuse, which is going to be C, is going to be equal to square root. Uh, 40, because each of these squares is 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way up to 80. 40 squared plus 40 squared, square root that, gives me 56.6 newtons. I'll just double check that roughly, that should be about 5 point, is each square a centimetre? Oh, look at that, that should, so we should get 5.6 centimetres, which we pretty much do, there's 5.5, or that's crazy messy. There's five, five and a half is there, 5.6-ish, yeah close enough. 56.6 newtons 
There we go, 5.6 centimetres. Right. The water balloon is uh, water balloon launcher is pulled back, so each stre stretchy rubber pier is extended by a distance of 0.58 metres. Calculate the total elastic potential energy stored in the two sides of the stretchy rubber. So this is a bit of a... When I first saw this, I was thinking, oh, maybe we could... These two bands are storing energy, but okay, let's... I assumed this and this are just counted as one spring. Um, otherwise, you'd end up with the answer of twice as much as what you should get. Um, so that's one sort of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, EP equals half KX, assumption that I made. Squared, that's just from your formula sheet, that's the f energy, where is it, down there, stored in a spring. Half KX squared, um, and that is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times what's K it was 98. We figured that out on the other side of the page, did we? Yes, yes we did. The spring constant is, can we see that there? 98 Newton meters. 98 times 0 0.58 uh, squared. And that is gonna give me 16.48 joules. And I'm right for one spring, so I know what I'm doing. For one side. Which is I'm gonna write pier E P times two is gonna give me ooh, what thirty-two point nine six. If you double that, thirty-two point nine six um, joules, um, and that is equal to thirty-three joules in total. Why have I rounded to two SF? Because there are two SF there, that's a minimum amount I've given NC, I don't really care about that. I know I marked for NCA this year and I didn't care about that. There's nothing really spoken, but what I do like, leave this line, if you've finished here, leave this line blank. Just do it sequentially. Don't leave big gaps. It's something I need to learn for my videos. Right, next question. Using information already above, describe how to calculate the launch speed of the balloon. No calculations are required. Sweet, so we need to do some hardcore algebra. Well, not really, but what we need to say, assume conservation of energy. Because um, what we're going to, we're, we're assuming the elastic potential energy is just going to get turned directly to kinetic. Which in reality, yeah, it's kind of the case, but not entirely, because you have quite a bit of friction and stuff going on. Um, so, see conservation of energy. Of energy. Energy. In other words, EP is equal to EK. Um, in other words, half. Kx squared is going to be equal to half mv squared. If you rearrange this for the velocity, you cancel out both halves, just divide by half, cancels them both out. In other words, v is equal to square root kx squared over m. I just moved the m underneath, and then I squared both sides. This is going to help us when we answer this question down here. Right. Describe two changes that can be made to increase the launch speed of the water balloon, stating any assumptions. Describe why these changes would give the desired effects. So I'm going to pause the video, write it out, and then discuss the answer. Right. So what I did is I looked at this formula here. This is why I derived this. Velocity is equal to square root the spring constant times the displacement squared divided by the mass. So if you increase the spring constant, or how far you pull it back, you're going to increase this, the velocity because you're going to increase the amount of energy stored in the spring. Or you could decrease the mass, which would increase the velocity, um, but the kinetic energy would main, remain the same. Uh, the reason being is because if you decrease the mass, the velocity can increase with this whole equation being equal to the same number. So I said either increase how far you pull it back or increase the spring constant. So I answered the two things you could do. This increases the, the energy stored in both cases, giving more kinetic energy, and I need to tack on hence greater velocity because I need to answer the actual question because it's asking how to increase the speed. I gave a third one just for those that might have wanted to put it. Decrease the mass, this gives a greater velocity with the same kinetic energy.